and this is pretest four questions five through eight on inequalities and um, so again using our technique of uh, solving the equation identifying points of equality and then testing intervals is what we've done here um, number five uh, greater than zero we change it to equal zero um, and then and then from there uh, uh, proceed and we ended up with uh, factoring x squared plus 4x minus 12 equals 0 into x plus 6 and x minus 2 and then from there um, solving each piece getting a minus 6 and getting a 2 and then I didn't show the tests in here but when you test these when you test these intervals you find out that numbers below negative 6 work and uh, numbers above negative 2 work so this right here should really be shouldn't really be shaded in. I should be just open in there. Okay. Um, so there's the solution to number five. And again, you should know how to use the virtual tools. If you don't, check our video uh, for questions one through four, and we do a pretty complete job of uh, showing how those virtual tools work in web assignment. Uh, question number six, uh, again, treat it as an equality. So change the inequality to an equal sign solve that equation get two answers out of that right plus and minus one identify the two numbers on a number line and then when you when you test those intervals when you try a number bigger than one it doesn't work right if we try x equals two we're going to get four is greater than or equal to one and that's a that's a false condition that's not true so that tells us that every number up above one isn't going Whereas if you try the number 0, which is between minus 1 and 1, you get 0 is less than uh, or equal to 1, and that's a true condition. So that is part of our solution interval. And uh, so that's that's being done on all of these, or assuming you're doing that on all of these, and uh, getting the resulting intervals. Now, number 7, we have a bit of an issue, because if you uh, set this thing equal to zero, right, like this, then that's fine and good, and the fraction will equal zero uh, when x minus four equals zero. And of course that gives you an answer of x equals four. And again, because we have equality involved here, the number four is shaded in. But uh, we also have an issue with this situation because the denominator being zero doesn't make the fraction zero but it makes the fraction undefined and of course out of that we get two values plus and minus two that we're concerned about so we also locate those to the number line minus two and plus two notice those are not shaded in we left those open those are not included because they cause a division by zero, so we exclude those from our answer set. So in this situation, the numerator going to zero is fine, so the four is included that causes that zero. But the denominator going to zero, of course, division by zero, undefined. So negative two and two, which cause the denominator to go to zero, are excluded, and they're left open. And then when you test the intervals, when you check the intervals, you'll find out numbers below 2 work. Numbers from 2 exclusive to 4 inclusive will work. Okay, And so there's your, there's your solution set. Right? Now, question number 5, again, if you think of this as equality, there's no way this fraction can be equal to 0. The numerator is a 5. The only way an A over a B can equal 0 is if a is zero. That's the only condition where that can be equal to zero. Um, so you don't get any answers formed out of equality. But if you look at the denominator, the division by zero becomes an issue. And this does factor, and it goes back to uh, chapter one on factoring. The question is, can the denominator ever equal to zero? So we do a little factoring by grouping and factor out a minus 4 out of the second pair and 
that gives us x squared minus 4 times x minus 1 equals 0. And so out of there, we get x minus 1 equals 0. So x equals 1 is one number we're concerned about. And of course, out of the x squared minus 4 equaling 0, we have two possibilities there that should make sense to you plus and minus 2. And again, we've loaded those to our number in the line. Now notice, once again, all three of these numbers, it's an open circle. Okay, It's exclusive of those endpoints. They are not included in our solution set. And then if you test numbers from each interval, you know, in here you test x equals 0. Up here you test x equals 3. In the original inequality, right? And down here you have sort of no choice. You're going to have to check a fraction like negative 1 and 5 tenths, negative 3 halves. And then down here you can get back to integers, x equals like negative 3 for the test. You'll find out that numbers below negative 2 work, numbers between minus 1 and 2 work, but the other intervals don't. So a little different way to do uh, inequalities. If you have trouble with inequalities, particularly if you had trouble with 7 and 8, you might want to look at our technique here. And the technique is get rid of the inequality, solve the equality, be careful about your, uh, your points that you determine to be uh, possible breakpoints.